Hello, now we're going to be putting the plinths together. Now, here's a couple that I've already made. And I've done one in like a kind of pewter effect and the other one in a wood effect. Now these are your bases for two of the projects, for your lantern and for your snow globe. Um, and it comes separately, so if you just wanted one of those projects you could, um, you know, just get the lantern and the plinth or the snow globe and the plinth and you'll be and you'll be good to go. Um, so what I did for the wood grain one was I took my side panels and I embossed them in a wood grain folder. It actually started this colour um, and then I swiped some dark brown ink pads over the top to get this lovely wood effect. Um, and then the sentiment here, this is from the snow globe set, you've got three sentiments in there and that works wonderfully on there. But the, the set itself comes with this decorative panel. There's another panel that goes behind there, but I didn't use it on this one because this is a lovely heavy weight 350 GSM. Um, and then I use the panel that's across the bottom with the with the little pier piercing detail. Now the way the plinths work, they've got this kind of raised section. So when you pop your item over, so let me bring in the lantern and show you. Here's the lantern. It slips over that raised section and it can't go anywhere. And then of course you can pop on there if you've got um, a scene you want inside, if you're using acetate, so you're, you're um, producing like clear windows and either your snow globe or your um, lantern, then you can create a scene in here. Um, or if you're using um, vellum or something that's frosted, this will be where you place your um, electronic light because you can even fit pillar candles inside these projects it doesn't have to be a little um, uh, tea light it could be um, an LED pillar candle and you pop it on here now I only used um, one um, layer with these now it was fine with this one because it was 350 GSM but with this one I think this was um, 300 and I found that there was a little bit of bounce in the top when I put a pillar candle on it so what I'm going to recommend is that you double up your layers on your top and on these side panels but uh, we'll we'll cover that in a moment because we want it to be nice and strong because a, a pillar candle even an electronic one could be quite heavy so these are your pieces these are your pieces for your that actually goes on top so it's like that's your side pieces and then these are your side panels so that can go on the top of that and then that's your piercing detail for the bottom strip and then that's the piece that forms the upstand for your lantern to go over now apart from that you will need some dies from your nested hexagons now, like I said, what I've done with mine, I haven't done it with the base, the base is just one piece, but the lid and the lip, I've doubled these up. So I cut these twice, but the handy thing is, is that you're not actually wasting any cardstock because it, it pops out of the middle. So you wanna save both of those pieces and layer them up twice. So that makes them nice and strong for when you put in, um, well, whatever you wanna put in there, really. So those are the pieces you need from your hexagon dies. So that was seven inch, six inch and five and a half. So those are the hexagon pieces you need. And then all of these pieces need cutting six times. Now I've put most of them together, but one of each I haven't. So what I've done with mine, they're actually cut out of an olivey gold color um, pearlescent card. I wanted to give them kind of a brushed um, brass look. So I've got this tarnished brass distress drain, distress, distress stain, and I just swiped it over my pieces. And then when I put my pieces together, because these are the pieces that build up, you've got the top panels. I'll put all the tape on just to, for speed. So this is the top piece. Um, that doesn't have any panels because this is the piece that just slips up inside your project but this is your main base panel that um, everybody gets to see this is the visible piece now what I recommend is that you actually fold which I've already done you fold along all of your score lines 
and then that makes it easier for your placement. So let's pop these down and then what I do after I've glued them down is I um, I swipe the stain over again but what I'll be doing at the end is I've got some um, what's it called gilding wax and I'm going to give that um, a little swipe over but I'll do that at the end when the project is actually um, put together when it's assembled On all the pieces I've just swiped it across because um, you know how sometimes that brush stainless steel or brushed brass it's kind of like well that was the effect I'm going for anyway and I think um, when I give it the highlights with the I'll just set that aside to dry and when I give it the highlights when I use the gilding wax I'm sure it'll really come to life then okay so these are the panels that form the the top piece that go inside the um, inside your project. So we just need to link these up. Okay, so that's done. Okay, now we'll do the base. Okay, now what we're going to do next is we're going to put the, the, um, this ring in, this kind of lip. So what this does is it fixes down there and then this one goes in and fixes underneath. So we'll fix it onto this one first. There we go. I'm just going to push that over. Just make sure that's all firmly secure. Now we're not putting the base on yet because it's handy to get our hand inside. Okay, now this is our raised piece. So what we need to do is we need to bend these outwards Because these are actually going to attach underneath that lip. Okay, so I'll take. Um, just thinking, I might be able to get away with taking these all off. Okay, let's drop that back in. 
looks like it's a bit of a snug fit um, if you find that um, then you might have done what I've done and that is um, just not overlapped your pieces quite as much as you needed to so it just means that um, when you're putting your um, the top pieces together um, just make sure that you overlap the pieces you know right over to, on the score line not before the score line actually on the score line so each of these pieces when you um, overlap them on the corner there you don't want it to, to stop short of the score line you actually want to be right on it but if you've got a nice snug fit then you're laughing as long as you can get it in there but if the worst comes to the worst it's only a couple of pieces um, of this and then just make sure you've overlapped it overlapped it well enough on the corners okay so we're really getting there now so it's starting to stay starting to take shape all we need to do is put our pop our top and our bottom on I'll anchor my top again I've, I've used two pieces I'll anchor my top to one tab And then I'll turn it over. And I'll check the other side. This is the handy thing putting the bottom on last. We can um, make sure everything's all fully fixed down in there. Give it a little bit of um, gilding wax or decorate in any other way that you'd like. So again with the base I've just swiped over with the um, Distress Stain. Okay so that's the base, um, the plinth put together and then we'll just check it with one of our snow globes and make sure it fits. And there you are and we'll be making the snow another snow globe next to match. <laughs> 